Let's have a look now at how we can actually use Flex and have a look at some examples as well. Now let's start with Polyphonic. We will use this piano part for this example, but anything that I'm going to show you can be applied to other polyphonic instruments such as guitars or what have you. Now let's mute the synth and the bass because it's in the background. So it will be this example. Let's make it louder. And let's have a listen. As you can hear, it's quite out of time in certain sections. The first thing you can try with Flex, and that works much better with rhythmic material, is to quantize the recording. I suggest that you avoid quantizing audio like that, because if it works, it most often doesn't work when there is complex material, and you will have to go in and fix it manually. If it works though, or if you manually fix everything, it will sound quite robotic. It takes out the human element and it feels very mechanic. Of course, if that is what you're after, by all means, use it. There's no right or wrong. In any case, uh, quantization can work for both single and multiple track selections. And we will look at multiple track quantization at a later video where we'll quantize drums. Now, the way to quantize is to go to your uh, region inspector and we have to turn flex mode on first, so command and F. And as you can see, it has chosen a different mode. I don't want uh, slicing, I want polyphonic. And if you don't see quantize here, don't worry about it. You just have to select the correct region. So if I select it, then quantize appears. And I, I can select my value here. So the basic rule is you set your value to the shortest note of your passage and then check. The last part is important. Never trust that everything worked perfectly. Always check the result. So in my passage, my shortest notes are eighth notes. So I'll set it to that. And as you can see, it has quantized it. So let's make it bigger and have a listen. I mean, it has quantized it perfectly, except for this part here. It went the eighth note after the one I wanted. So I can go in manually and fix that section. So I can grab this one here and just pull it there. Let's use the click as well. Great, let's Command Z and go back. Now, before I show you what my approach is, let's see how flex markers work. Now, when you turn flex on, Logic will analyze your audio. Don't forget to check what it is on. And then it will place flex markers to the beginning of your tra transients. Sometimes it will be perfect, like in our case. If you look closely, there are flex markers at the beginning of each transient. Actually, if I open up the audio editor, you can see it better. And then go to File. If you don't see anything here, it's because the transient editing mode is off. You can turn it on by clicking this button here. Now the transients that we have in the tracks area are visible here and we can actually edit them. So for example, I think that here we have a few too many. So let's have a listen with that bar five. Yeah. So, uh, what I can do to remove them, if I want to take the long way, I can just simply go to my eraser tool, then command click, and then click on the transients that I want to get rid of. Or what I can do with my eraser is to hold it and then sweep, and it will delete everything it touches. Let's command Z to go back. Or what you can do, and it's preferable if you only want to delete one marker, is to double click on the marker just with the pointer tool and it deletes it. Now to add the marker you use the pencil tool. Let's change to that. Now before you add the marker right click and make sure that toggle snap edits to zero crossings is checked because that way you won't get any clicks because the marker will always be created at a zero crossing point. Okay now let's use the pencil so I will command 
and I can add a pencil, a marker, wherever I want. So it's Command Z. Now, as you can see, the background in the audio editor doesn't make any sense. That is because I have it in samples. Let's change it to the grid. So go on view and you select whatever you want here. So I think the easiest for us is the bars and bits. See where its note falls. Okay, so uh, sometimes, what else? Yes, sometimes the analysis won't be perfect. Like here, it will have too many uh, flex markers or sometimes it won't have enough. So if I want to remove some of these markers, I can go to this minus sign here and press it and it will start removing the flex markers. If I want to put them back, I simply click on the plus sign and it will start adding them. Now, when the plus sign is no longer available, that means that you have reached the original analysis state. You can't add any more flex markers by pressing on this plus sign. This will only add up to the original number of markers. If you want to add more, you, have, you will have to do it manually with the pencil as we have seen. Now, let me show you how I would approach this example. Let's get rid of that. So what I do is I will fix the sections that need fixing and then leave the rest as is. And I might do that in blocks, but I don't quantize the whole thing. So let's listen back. Okay, the first thing that needs fixing is this note on bar three because it comes in a bit late. Where you hover your mouse is important. Now pay attention to the mouse pointer. Let's make this one a bit bigger. Okay, so when I hover my mouse on the upper half of the region, I get one bar and a plus sign. When I hover my lower my mouse on the lower half of the region, I get three bars and a plus sign. One bar will add a single flex marker and the three bars will add three flex markers. Now here's the difference. If I add one flex marker and then let's say I grab this node and I want to move it to the right, you can see that it moves everything. It expands the material at the left and it compresses the material on the right. It's command Z. And here's the difference with this one. Let's add three now. So right now, when I add three, three markers will be created. So one at the point where I clicked, and one at the previous transient, and one at the following transient. So now, when I want to correct the timing of this node, it only affects the area between the markers, not the rest. So here it is. Let's command Z. And last thing uh, before we start correcting this example, depending on where I hover my mouse, I get a different mouse icon. Let's go here. So when you hover it above an already existing marker, you will get the bar with the little triangle on top of it. That means that your flex marker will be placed on top of the existing flex marker, like that. When I hover my mouse at the point where there is no flex marker, you get the bars without uh, the triangle at the top. So here's the difference. Now that will create a new marker at the place where I will click. So let's go back and start correcting this example. So in our case, this note comes in a bit late. So since I only want to affect that, I will add multiple markers. So I will click here and then I will simply drag this one on exactly at bar 3. Okay, I will have to fix these ones as well. So let's see what we've got. This one needs to come here. This one needs to come here and move this one here. And maybe this one as well. So let's add three here and just move that here. Actually, 
that's not what I want to do. I will add this marker here and then what one here and delete that one and do that. And I want to bring that one in the front as well. So sometimes that will happen. So what you can do is just click on it. I don't want that. Actually, let's go back here and check what happened here. And then let's add one down here as well. So I'm just going to grab this one, move it, and let's have a listen. And that's it. So as you can see, I have left uh, certain sections untouched. I have just I have just fixed the ones that I thought needed fixing. So let's have a listen again from the beginning. Okay, so now say that we messed up or that it's actually very robotic or whatever and we don't like it. So you don't have to command Z until you get back to the initial state. You can simply right click on it and either select reset manual flex edits or reset all flex edits. Now these two right now have no difference unless you have quantized the region. So right now, no matter which one I choose, it will do the same thing. So reset manual flex edits, it resets everything, command Z, and reset all flex edits, it does the same thing. But if I quantize the audio first, so let's go to quantize, and let's go to eighth notes, and then I manually add some markers, let's add them here at the beginning, so you know where we are. Let's add a few. Now, when I right click on the reset manual flex edit, it will delete the manual markers that I put in and only those. So let's try that. You can see these are gone, but the rest have stayed. Let's command Z. And if I click on reset all flex edits, it will delete everything, both the manual and the automatically placed markers. And there you are. So let's command Z and have a look at some more ways of deleting markers. And let's zoom in a bit. Now, same principles as with the audio editor apply here. I can double click on a marker to delete it, just like that. Or I can clip, click on the little X right above it and it will also delete it. Or what I can do is to go to my tools and change to my razor. And as before, I can either, either click on one or I can click and drag and delete multiple ones. Now be aware, if you accidentally click on the header of the region, it will delete the region. So let's see. So be aware of that. And let's go back. So the last two things I need to cover in this video are the tools. With Flex, we can work with both the Marquee tool and the Flex tool. So let's have a look at the Marquee tool first. And this ties in nicely with the Marquee video, uh, which was, uh, I think, video 26 of the series, the previous one. If you want to know all the functions of the marquee, have a look at that one. So let's reset all flex. Let's reset everything. And let's make a marquee selection. Okay. Let's select that. Now, as before, depending on where I click, the result will be different. Now, if I hover my mouse on the upper half of the region, I get this grab uh, hunt icon. Now, when I click with this hunt tool, you will see that four flex markers will be created. Two at the marquee borders and two at the previous and next flex markers. Now, the selected area will not be affected by the flex. It won't be stretched or compressed, but the area next to that, the left and the right of our selection, will be affected. Actually, let's try this area here, because you can see it much better. I will reset everything. Let's make our selection here and then grab it. So we've got a bit more space, you can see. Now I move this one. The selection, the murky selection is not affected. It's just this area here. So let's command Z. 
Now when I hover my mouse on the lower half of the region, I get the usual three bars, and when I click on it, it will create three flex markers, one exactly where I clicked, and then two at the borders of our selection. Now let's look at an example. Okay, say that I want to extend the tail of my audio. So I'm going to turn flex off, extend this one a bit, and let's say that I just want to extend that. Okay, so what I'm going to do is turn flex on again. I will make my selection with the marquee tool. Actually, what I can do is just go in manually and do that. And just extend that a bit and then extend that a bit. Let's solo it. Or I can do it with the marquee. So here's the marquee. I will click up here. That's already done. So now, or actually, I want the three ones. Okay, so I will extend this one now. Maybe that one. I don't want that. Just like that. In any case, the, the Barkey tool is quite good when you have to make large selections and just move it around and you don't want to you don't want that you don't want this area to be affected by the flex now lastly let's reset everything and let's have a look at the flex tool so let's go down to flex tool let's unsolo that now if you have the flex tool selected and you're wondering why it's not working, it's because you have flex turned on. So you have to turn flex off. Let's go down here. And now we can use this tool. So I'm going to command click. It will analyze it and it will seem like nothing's happening. And uh, that's the point. Uh, it's supposed to be, you know, quick access. So it will immediately do an analysis, select the most treatable algorithm for the material we have. And then we can start, you know, moving around the regions. So if I co command and click, I can just grab this one, just move it here. Maybe correct the timing of this one a bit, just move it up to six. Maybe this one to eight. And just like that. So you can just quickly use flex without having to uh, flex, turn flex on or off. You can also quantize with that one. So you can just. Go up here, we've got, what's that, fourth note, quarter notes. So we'll click on that one and it will start quantizing as is. You can't see much difference. Let's do this one. Quantize eighth notes and does it automatically without us having to look at the transient lines or anything. Okay, and that's it for the polyphonic algorithm and the way you can work with flex markers. I'll see you in the next Flex video.